morning, folks, and welcome to Irish Media Network Sports Update. I am your host, Joe Caulfield, and welcome to the show. So let's kick things off with a bit of a sports roundup to see what's happening in the world today. In rugby, Andy Farrell has named his side to face Italy in the resumption of the Six Nations competition on Saturday. He's handed two first-time starting caps in the competition to Leinster duo Hugo Keenan and Will Connors. In GAA, COVID-19 continues to pose a threat to the continuation of the footballing season due to the fact that a Roscommon player has tested positive for the virus ahead of their Alliance League final round match against Cavan this weekend, as Roscommon have already qualified for, for promotion to Division 1 of the Championship, or the uh, league rather, it is likely that game will be postponed. In the Champions League, Liverpool won 1-0 away to Ajax last night, and Man City came from behind to secure a 3-1 win over Porto. And finally, in the Europa League, Dundalk are preparing for their first Europa League performance in four years tonight, ahead of their uh, match against Mulda in the Tallis Stadium, kicking off at 5-5 to this evening. So lowest look forward to it with regard to that. And we're going to stick on the subject of Irish football because joining me this week is one of the co-founders of supporters group and fan forum you boys in green Liam Murray is joining me Liam how are things uh, not too bad Joe uh, all good here thanks a million for coming on the show look I'm, I'm not going to kind of um, faff around I'd love to kind of jump straight in and talk about champagne football the book by Mark Tyg and Paul Rowan which effectively investigates the excesses within and the mismanagement of the FAI during John Delaney's tenure. So kicking off first and foremost, what is your opinion of the book and how reflective is it of that time? Um, yeah, no, it's it's a great it's a great read. I mean, uh, for fans that have an interest in football, but for non-fans that have absolutely no interest in football, it's it's a great uh, look at a part of Irish society that we've always known about, which is the cute who that gets into power and runs it the way they want to do it, and they use Gambian politics to keep themselves in situ with uh, a lot of yes men around. I mean, it's not a new story in any way, but mm. uh, yeah, the story of John Delaney is uh, yeah, it's, it's quite interesting, you know. Mm -hmm. One thing that uh, appears quite evident in the book it focuses on a time when John Delaney was seen to be doing a lot, particularly at away matches, he was drinking and carousing with fans a lot. Um, there's, you know, there's, there's plenty of leaked videos at the time of that. Can I just ask, as, as a person who was at those tournaments, at those away matches, what was your impression of John Delaney as the CEO of the organization that was supposedly managing Irish soccer at that time? What was the, the fan perception of him at that time? Um, at the time, he, he started coming out onto the pitch and throwing his scarf or his tie into the crowd and giving fist pumps. I think he might have done it in Skopje, in Macedonia, and they did it in Slovakia. And like the, the fans are in there clapping and cheering the team off, whatever, you know what I mean? They've had a few drinks. So you're going to have people laughing. You have people, you know, singing, all this sort of thing. So he, he kind of lapped it up. And he always had this need, and always had this need to be loved by the fans. Um, so yeah, it was it was very strange. You know, you're looking at it, going like, what is he doing? Like, you know. But in his head, it, it was, you know, they love me, you know what I mean? Like he was yeah, nearly like yeah. as if he was the star player that came over, you know, it's like you know, one one draw or something, you're like bizarre. That's yeah, that yeah. Really it, you know. And can I ask it like I, I want to kind of go into more detail, but things like nights in Poland where the team were getting beaten badly, it was poor performances, the, the fans were singing the fields of Athenry almost in defiance of the performance, and then John Delaney was hitting the pub and having a free bar for the night. I mean, talk to me about times like that. Like like they covered a lot of it in the book, but give me your first hand impression of what happened at that time. Uh yeah, I mean you know, once we got tanked by, uh, you know, Spain, I mean, before that, w once we lost Croatia, we knew we were out, right? So that, mm. that was it. So, you know, uh, the night before, was it the night before Spain? Like, we, we a few of us arrived into that uh, square, the famous one where he was recorded, and it was mm. absolute bedlam with, like, I've never seen as many drunk Irish fans in my life. Um, and we met people who just saw it happening, and like they said, he was, he was carried off by fans by the fans and all that like it's just embarrassing really you're like you're going 
you're, you're here, to, you know, as the head of uh, sports administration, and you're you're more drunk than the Irish fans themselves. Yeah. Who are here just on, you know, you know, it was it was unbelievable. And in terms of it all then coming out in 2019, I suppose the bridging loan that he had given to the FAI for 100 grand was was the catalyst for the big investigation that ultimately led to his downfall. How do you think it's going to turn out in the wash for him? Um, well, I, I've heard that the ODC investigation has a lot of evidence. And, you know, most most fans you would talk to would think nothing's going to happen. You get a slap in the wrist. Mm. Well, I would normally be like that as well, but from, from what I heard and how they think it's going, uh, it, it might go a lot further than people think. Um, and there's but what I heard is that it was used as a as a piggy bank, a personal piggy bank, and it wasn't just John. But mm. that's that's only conjecture. So uh, look, we'll just wait and see. You know. Yeah. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. they'll do a current investigation. You know. Well, that's that's all you can hope for, and that justice is served, and the truth does come out. So, Liam, just staying with champagne football. Uh, there's loads of stories in the book that are incredibly entertaining. Is there any stories in the book that you can elaborate on and give us more detail that maybe wasn't covered in the book? Uh, yeah, like like Mark Tyke, you know, he said he could have wrote like a lot of other chapters in it. So when we did read the book, you're kind of going, oh, we barely, that barely got a mention, but maybe so much could go in. But there is one story where um, a couple of nights before uh, Ireland played Italy. Now, now this is the biggest game under John Delaney's stewardship because if we beat Italy, we go into a knockout of a tournament, which you know we have done since two thousand and two. Um, so we get an email in from uh, the head of communications uh, two days. So we the... we being uh, oh, you boys uh, in green. Quite big, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So so we get that email in, and it's like time for action. And it was a forwarded email from the head of communications, right, from John Delaney. And, like, the head of communications included John Delaney's personal email. And it was a screenshot of the YBIG forum that he'd taken at 3 o'clock in the morning, two days before this game. That's what John Delaney was doing on our YBIG forum, monitoring it for some stuff that was said. And literally, it was some idiot's uh, throwaway comment about John should be shot. And in the context of the whole... Uh, threads of conversation. No one mentions it. No one. It's just discounted as, you know, just someone posting some shite. Uh, but well, what did they want you to do about that? Oh, well, then another uh, couple of days later, they came back to us again and they were like, uh, you know, obviously, uh, uh, Jared, the other guy, in YB, he, he deleted the comments, you know what I mean? Went, uh, hmm. Whatever, yeah. Uh, and then they wanted us, but they said <laughs> they wanted us to have a public apology for John Delaney for that comment on the forum but they said because we've got such a big game coming up we'll wait till the thursday which is the day after it so obviously we told them where to stick that idea mm. uh, this is the kind of smallness of it's reflective of thing, you priorities know? like where should your focus be two days before the biggest game you know since you know our last qualifying match for uh, a quarter final and that's Oh, the like, you, point. like you're like, at least you're just embarrassed for them. Like, it was mm. just like, like, are you for real? Like, mm. um, is there yeah, anything, anything in the book that isn't mentioned that you could elaborate on <laughs> and give us some <laughs> details of? Well, we would have a lot of stories. Like, literally, if you meet anyone that's in the football community, say, give us a good John story. Like, if he wasn't the head of the FEI and, you know, he was just some random that owned some, uh, you know, small little factory he'd be great crack you know what i mean like yeah the stories you'd hear like and some of them you wouldn't know if they're true or not this one i double check this one just to make sure that this is true and it involves mike ashley right uh, for anyone that doesn't know who mike ashley he's the owner of newcastle united yeah. uh, club in england and also jd sports so he's quite wealthy so he contacted a bookmaker a well-known bookmaker and he said look can you come over to london and meet us because you know i want to talk some business so Obviously, your man says, crap, go over to London. So on the day, they remained uh, to have a meeting, and he gets a call off Mike Ashley. He says, Mike says, look, can you come to this pub? Uh, so he's like, okay, this is a change of plan. No problems. I'll meet you there, yeah. Mike. <laughs> so he walks in, and there's Mike Ashley, John Delaney, and Emma English. Emma English has, was his previous girlfriend. Mm -hmm. So he's like, okay, fair enough. Let's go with this. So they're on the beer. 
And then later on, at some point, uh, Emma English starts singing a song. So he decides. Uh, so John walks around the pub to never disrupt. But you could, you could have Emma singing a song. So he gets everything to be quiet, right? Obviously, some punter in there is just having a beer, and he just obviously tells him to stick it, go mm. away. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Uh, so Mike Ashley then decides that he's going to intervene in this. So he goes up to this other guy and starts threatening him and take him outside for a fight. And while this is happening, the, the well-known bookmaker just gets his jacket and legs it out of the pub, and off he goes. So he came back and told like the staff and all that what happened. It's just th these are the kind of mini little stories that you hear. Mm. That just, like, you're just like, oh my god. <laughs> Moving slightly on, I want to talk about um, you boys in green in general because it is like um, a, a, a fantastic source in terms of a fan forum for a community to be built around the supporters and the follow up followers of Irish football. Can I ask you, in terms of, Stephen Kenny has had quite a, a rough start to his, his tenure as, as Irish boss. Like, to be fair, you have to take into consideration the, the circumstances of COVID and all that sort of thing. But they are too, like, they've lost his two matches in charge. What has been the fan response within you boys in green to his tenure so far? Um, I, I, yeah, I mean... What we have been watching for the last 10 years as fans has been predominantly awful. And there's just there's just so much. I think there's a, generally there's a lot of goodwill towards them because we want to just see a bit of progression and some sort of strategy in place. And he's shown that with the under-21s. You can see a bit of it in the games we played so far. I mean... We should really have had at least a goal or two in some of the games. I mean, yeah, I mean, lads are passing the ball to the goalkeeper. You know, he he can't he can't be a fault for that. We're you know we're going about it the right way. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the Slovakia game is a bit of a sickener, but I mean, we had three stabs at that to get to that. You know what I mean? And we didn't deserve to be to be in a position to get to a playoff, really. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, we were poor in the group. We finished bottom of the uh, the nation league, and then we're still in the playoff. You know. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, there are some fans you know who are already getting on his back I, I don't really follow the Twitter and Facebook and all that side of things where I'd say it's much more vocal mm -hmm. uh, but I mean I'm reading the, the news reports the journalists, the journalists are kind of being the same you know we need a chance you know there's you know we want to see a new progressive kind of uh, passing style that isn't just based on just hoofing the ball out like um, yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I was away in a game with Denmark and uh, for the other playoff that we drew nil all. And like it looked like one of the tactics was is like it was like rugby, like trying to get the ball into the corner for a throw and up the pitch. Or if you're lucky, you might kick it off a Danish player. So it hits off him and we get a throw. And you're gone. Like that's that's our plan. Mm hmm. So yeah, yeah. It, it does seem that there's a lot of hope around uh, Stephen Kenny in terms of his his tactics, um, and that there are some green shoots of progress within that. Um, so let's hope that that continues. Uh, while I have you, I can't let you go without uh, doing our "How well do you know your sport?" quiz. I hope you've uh, you've done your homework before coming on because we have that coming next. Uh It is a bit of crack, of course, but we like to really put the pressure on with that graphic before uh, before we kick off the quiz. So, look, it's no pressure. It's eight questions. Some of them are multiple choice, but I'm going to kick things off with you uh, with number one. So, how well do you know your sport? In what year was the League of Ireland founded? Oh, God. Uh, uh, 1923. Very close. 1921. Ooh. Good, very good educated guess there. Uh, number two, who won the league that year? Uh, I would say it would be some random Dublin club that might uh, that may not be around anymore. Um, but oh god, uh, I'd hazard a guess at that because you're going definitely along the right lines there. Uh, uh, it could be someone like. Uh, Dublin Town or one of these kind of names or something like that that aren't around anymore. Yeah, it was St. James's Gate. St. James's Gate. All right. Uh, number three, what team has won the most League of Ireland titles? 
uh, Shamrock Rovers. Shamrock Rovers, indeed. Uh, what Irish player has the most national caps for Ireland? Uh, it's either Robbie or Shea Given, but I'll go with uh, Robbie Keane. Robbie Keane is correct. And staying on that tangent, Robbie Keane has the most international goals for Ireland as well. How many international goals has he scored? Uh, I think it's 68. 68 it is indeed. Now you're, see, you're flying back into it here. Uh, number six, how many World Cups have Ireland qualified for? Uh, three. That is indeed correct. Uh, number seven, Roy Keane made his international debut against which country? Was it A, Malta, B, Turkey, or C, Chile? God, yeah, I thought I would have known that. I was thinking of Iceland or something like that, but I think that might have been the game he got sent off when he was captain. So I will go with Turkey. Close, but no cigar. It was Chile, unfortunately. And finally, number eight, Ireland's FIFA ranking right now is A, 45th, B, 37th, or C, 28th. Yeah, 37th. 37th is correct. And at the end of that, you got four from eight, 50%. It wasn't bad because it's a hard quiz. Uh, yeah, that's all right. So I was a bit worried about you that. So that. it's not too bad. Fair play to you. And that is the How Well Do You Know Your Sport quiz for this section. Finally, before we let you go, what we'd like to do is, and you can't get this question wrong, we have a segment where we ask all of our guests to pick their all-time Irish sporting legend. So please watch the clip and give us your opinion on that. The heat by O'Driscoll. Oh, brilliant by O'Driscoll. It's what's keen. Roy Keane with a captain's goal. And up to move Rocket. And the 16 times champion jockey, Tony McCoy, he comes storming up the hill to win the Gold Cup. Sam Rory, you know the storylines and the stakes for him. A win not just means the Masters, but it means the Grand Slam. And that's beautiful. And Sonny O'Sullivan is going to take the world title. The Guar Cup to Dublin's captain, Stephen Cluxton. The rising pride of Ireland, So, Liam, going to have to push you for an answer. Who is your all-time Irish sporting legend? Well, uh, not from a personal point of view, but I think Rory McIlroy for, you know, uh, on the global sports setting, because a lot of them are just localised, and then Katie Taylor. So I'll give it to the two of them. Fair enough. Good stuff. Interesting. I, I would have had you paid for Roy Keane, but sure, what do I know? Uh, if if Roy Keane had just retired, uh, he would possibly get the vote, but all of the stuff after it and, you know, I wouldn't be too much of a fan of Roy Keane for his, for his comments and the way he behaves after after he's retired. So, no, not for me. Fair enough. Fair enough. Come here. Thank you so much for joining us, Liam. Really appreciate it. Just before I let you go, if people want to get in touch with you boys in green or even join the fan forum, how do they do so? Uh, yeah, the site's just ybig.ie. Uh, the forum is exactly uh, where, you know, fans can discuss away games or uh, in general. Um, so... Uh, just log on there and then they'll find us themselves, you know. That's brilliant. Thanks a million. Okay, thanks, Joe. Best luck. Cheers. Thanks a million.